In this episode, we're in New Brunswick, heading to the small town of Hillsborough, just south of Moncton. This was an area that was uh, historically famous for its uh, extensive gypsum mining, it was one of the largest gypsum producers back in the day in Canada. The Hillsborough area features lots of open quarries that go on for uh, many kilometers back in the forest. But for this episode, we're not going to go near the quarries. We're going to go underground into one of the only remaining open mines, underground mines, gypsum mines here in the Hillsborough area. This mine is quite extensive and it's quite a gem and it's uh, well hidden as well. The gypsum mines in the area were known as the, of course, Hillsborough gypsum mines or Hillsborough plaster mines sometimes. But without further ado, let's get going and head to the site and uh, go underground. Let's go. Welcome, welcome. Here we are in Hillsborough, New Brunswick at what is known as the, uh, the Hillsborough gypsum mine or sometimes also known as the Hillsborough plaster mines. Anyway, we'll step up on it here. We just arrived. Um, an amazing uh, deposit of uh, gypsum here. Allegedly was quite world famous back in the day. There is an open mine here. And uh, we'd like to say a special thanks to the subscriber who actually provided us the coordinates for this, who hunted it down and found it himself. So we're going to uh, go in this mouth and uh, explore the whole thing today. It is quite extensive and uh, a very impressive sight. And we'll make our way here through the entrance section and get down into the mine itself, which is uh, quite deep. I've opened up the iris a bit so you can get a good look. Here at the, uh, I guess we'll call this the mouth, the entrance area, it seems really cavey, like uh, looks more natural than mined, but um, there's this sort of giant arch area that's the mouth down there. If you look in the center of the screen, that, that distinct arch way down there, that is the mouth. All of this uh, crumbled gypsum is everywhere here in heaps. White as snow. Okay, now I'm inside and uh, you can look back up to where I was sitting there on the, uh, on the arch. That's coming in from the forest, this giant uh, gypsum heap that's here in the middle. Again, there is the, uh, the mouth where we're ready to enter. This is sort of a skylight up into the forest. Okay, to head in, it's uh, a scrabble down this little pile that comes down into the mine. Once you get in, it opens right up into this uh, large tunnel. Here's some uh, distinct old workings drilled right into the ceiling. This big mud pile coming down here is a, a collapsed shaft from the surface. If you look up there, all the rocks and rotten logs and shit that have uh, come down through there and uh, they were just probably... I don't think this is natural. This was probably put down as a, a plug attempt. So there isn't a great big uh, hole in the forest floor for animals or people to fall into. So anyway, this is the bottom of it and it just spreads out like this. So coming in here behind our trusty soldier, if you can get an idea of scale in here, uh, this opens up into a really, really big, probably three-story, four-story ceiling. Traditional stope mining, uh, room and pillar. Amazing in here, just cavernous. So I'm pretty much approaching the middle of the uh, this large room. And once you're in here standing in the middle of this spot, you can really distinctly see the, uh, the room and pillar style because uh, there's a pillar, there's a pillar, there's a pillar in the distance, here's a pillar here. 
So it's like all these archways, like a sort of like a, a Roman temple of sorts, and they just go off in different directions. As long as they keep pillars coming to the floor, they can arch the ceilings way up like this and just keep going off in different directions. Yeah, this room right here is probably a good 80 by 150 feet where I'm standing right now. But there are remnants of logs and little bits of water flow, little brooks here and there. You can see where it drains. Now there are ore carts that start to show themselves coming out of the mud here. There's the right rail and if you go a little further you can start to see the left. And then it comes out of the mud and heads this way and off up in there. Beautiful. Now what in the heck is this? There's like a pool. Any theories? Shaft going down. <laughs> I'd say they dug down. Wow. That looks deep, but there is a pillar in the middle of it holding the, uh, the ceiling up. You can see the distinct uh, gypsum vein or whatever you want to call it where it starts there. That's just rock above it, but you can see the distinct white where they probably went chasing for it deeper here. Just taking a quick turn around here to look back at the mouth. Um, he's up there at the, uh, you can see the glint of daylight coming in. He's up there standing doing some sketches so we can have some, uh, some mind map to show you in the video. You can see how small he is up there. This is just massive in here. So here is the, uh, there's the daylight coming in from the entrance where we scrabbled down from the outside and passing this large pillar. First thing here to the left is a, uh, a collapse again coming down from a surface shaft or hole that was in the uh, the ceiling or the back and uh, coming through here we come into the uh, the first room off to the left so is there an end over there yeah okay so that's an end so again this is the room off to the immediate left a lot of timbering in here there's a large structure here holding something back into there. Yeah, this large mass of, uh, of timbering work. Okay, we're leaving that area. What we're gonna do is continue to do lefts. We normally do rights first and then work our way around, but we're gonna do lefts and go away, go around the mine that way and end up finishing on the right. We're gonna continue going to the, uh, the left. So we're heading over here next. There's uh, one of the big pillars there. So we'll start this way. So this uh, goes to a dead end down in here. There's a large tunnel where they took out uh, the gypsum there, undoubtedly. There is some old classic uh, mining debris here though, left behind from a century ago. There are some rails for sure. And then there's this interesting structure. Don't know what it might have been. Some crank or pulley system of some sort. There definitely looks like a spindle there that would uh, wind up cable or rope, I would assume. It heads off there into the distance into a dead end tunnel area where they, looks like two arches side by side, plugged with mud. I'll take a little closer look here. Yeah, what looks to be two arches, one there and one there, plugged in mud. And there's the gypsum band down there, quite visible. All right. So heading past the uh, this old piece of equipment, 
the tunnel does continue down this way. Again, we're, we're doing the lefts. Here's another debris area of something that was mechanical back in the day. Some sort of pulley system again. All right. That's back out into the main area. There's another good look at that pillar. Roman pillar mining, folks. Got to hold the ceiling up. They spanned quite the large distances in here, so... Okay, we've got some rails coming up out of the mud here. As you can see... an intersection of rails coming up here. So this is that big body of water that was uh, at the end of the main chamber in the middle of the mine. So we're over here where these, uh, these rails came along past the water. A lot of timbering here to hold it up by the look of things because that water goes down deep. So these rails come to their end over here, where he's standing. They go right to the end wall, because this, uh, this stope in here is gigantic. Um, they took a lot out here. That goes up a good two, three stories. Big ball taken out there, one there, and one up in here around the corner. There is a little hole up there. He's going to go check it out. Cool. So we're coming up on him at the top of that uh, pile. And this is the hole up in the top of the stope looking down. Yeah, that goes... Uh, this We're on the other side of that, uh, that pool of water. And it's kind of like a little uh, bit of land here over on the other side, all muddy. Amazing. And the map making continues. <laughs> So just looking from the top of the pile down into the room, back here at this end where the rails end, you can see just in human scale how big this stope is. Okay, so that seems to be everything on the left. Are we ready to head over here to the chamber on the right? Up over in there, yeah. So as we head over here on the right, there's a, there's a distinct water flow noise. <laughs> a little waterfall happening over here. Yeah, there is a mound coming down through here that you can see. And it's coming from that collapsed shaft or hole to the surface that was up there. So some water flow coming into the mine. And here's where it's coming from up here. Just a look from the top of the mound up here where the water's flowing in. There he is heading off down into this uh, tunnel to the right. There's looking back to where we came from in the main central chamber. Just wanted to comment this water flow coming down the pile here. If you follow it, it flows down here and then it just disappears. It's not pooling down here. It heads into this crack and it's gone. There's probably, as in a lot of gypsum mines, a lot of kind of underground streams and water flows that, uh, that eat at it for millennia and, and erode it, and then there's collapses, and that's how caves form in, uh, in gypsum bodies. So, yeah, it's interesting to see how, how that works from uh, a very preliminary point of view, because this will be long after we're dead before uh, there's a nice cave carved through here, but this is how it starts. Okay, he's ahead of us down here. We're following that right-hand tunnel. And there's lots of uh, flows in from the surface. There must have been a lot of holes that went up top because there's another mound coming down here. There's another mound over there. And here's the, uh, the room we come into. 
I don't know if you can hear the reverberation in here it's uh it's large. <laughs> Ooh. Pillar forming there as they started to head that way. They started to head in there. There's another mud flow coming in from the surface again. Another pillar there. You can see where they uh, could head off in different directions, just keep the rooms going. So these molds and funguses or fungi have an uh, undisturbed ability to grow down here with no weather, wind, rain, sleet, winter, snow, nothing. And they're quite, uh, they do quite well. I think I've said it before in other episodes, it's like uh, the hair of a Muppet. Just the lightest, fluffiest, uh, softest looking fluff. We don't touch it or anything. We just leave it be. And one last little piece of nature that we will not disturb. Don't know how long this little buddy's been growing here, but uh, a, s a lone toadstool of sorts, some sort of mushroom, sitting here on top of the mud, just living life. None like it. I guess a spore might have blew in here in the wind because there's nothing else as he's a lone soul, that's for sure. So anyway, that's it. Um, there is our exit, and we're going to head back out into the light and the life and trek back to the vehicle through the forest. So that uh, is the conclusion of the Hillsboro Gypsum Mine, Hillsboro Plaster Mines, here in Hillsboro, New Brunswick. Bye bye! Woo! Now, before we roll credits here, we'd like to add a little bonus section. Um, anyone who goes to Hillsboro or knows the area, one of the first things that you may see by the, uh, the side of the water in Hillsboro are the two large gypsum silos that still remain standing to this day. Now they are an absolute haven to tagging and uh, graffiti, as you will see, but uh, we did go down and take, take a look around with the camera, and um, we'd like to just show you all this footage now. Erosion and so on is happening from the, uh, the waves and the water and the tide coming in and out. Uh, we don't know how much longer these are going to last, but they have de definitely stood the test of time. I guess there's no plans to tear them down by force, so I guess they're just going to let them rot and collapse into the, uh, into the water eventually, someday. This is where the gypsum would be conveyed to the top and to, uh, into these large uh, steel tanks that are inside these uh, concrete structures, and then they'd silo down to this little dump spot at the bottom where they could be uh, brought out or poured out uh, into conveyors that would take them out onto the, uh, the boats that are standing by. So anyway, that's it. Just wanted to add this little bonus section at the end to fill out the Hillsboro episode. It was truly relevant to the mine, so, uh, and it's something you don't miss when you're in Hillsboro. That's it. Now we can roll credits. Go!